to some degree, the answer is, well, you have to develop a philosophy uh, of life that's detailed, that contains within it an assessment of your thoughts about the relationship between truth and deceit. What's the most effective way of overcoming self-deception? Well, that's a complicated problem, but I suppose there's some relatively simple answers to it. I mean, I guess the reason I, I commented on it being complicated is that you can ask a question like that in a very short period of time, and that sort of implies that there's an equally short answer in some sense, but the problem of self-deception is extremely thorny and it's tangled up with the issue of ignorance as well, right? How do you know when you just don't know something and how do you know when you're being willfully blind and how do you know when you're outright lying? All of those things are, especially to yourself, all of those things are very complicated. And so to some degree, the answer is, well, you have to develop a philosophy uh, of life that's detailed, that contains within it an assessment of your thoughts about the relationship between truth and deceit. So, for example, do you believe that it's okay to lie? Is it okay to deceive other people to get what you want? Are there occasions when it's okay to deceive other people if that helps them get what they want? So that would be an, an instance, for example, of what people perhaps call white lies, right? Lies that are designed to be of benefit. Are they appropriate? Do you feel that it's okay to deceive yourself or, or other people in the pursuit of things that you believe are valuable? And none of those are trivial questions and, and they can't be answered with trivial answers. So to some degree, you need a moral philosophy that privileges the truth above all else if you wish to cease engaging in self-deception. And then you might ask, well, how would you develop such a philosophy? And some of that might be, well, reading about moral philosophy, reading literature, because it often deals with questions of good and evil and deception, thinking about it, writing about it, reading about it. Well, I said that. Um, and, and also contemplating how central an issue this is for your life. How important is this? And, and why is it important if it's important? Have you lied and got into trouble? Do you believe that you can lie and get away with it? If you don't believe that you can get away with it, do you still engage in it? If so, why? All right, so let's leave the complexity behind though, but, but that's a necessary part of the answer. How do you stop deceiving yourself assuming that you want to stop doing so? Well, I don't believe that you can tell unerringly when you're telling the truth. I think that some of the time, when you lie outright, you know. And so what I would recommend and have recommended in my writings, in my books, especially in 12 Rules for Life, the first of my last two books, said tell the truth or at least don't lie. And I added that codicil to the phrase tell the truth because it became evident to me when I was writing that, you know, I don't know the truth, certainly not in its fullness. And so I can't say to someone, tell the truth, but I can say, if you believe that the truth is valuable, and if you believe that living your life according to the dictates of the truth is for the best for you and, and everyone else, let's say, then you could at least stop lying. And then, I would say that as you pay attention to what you say so that you're attending to your deceptive statements and trying to stop making them, some of them maybe you know outright they're not true, some of them make you feel uneasy and weak, that would be a less uh, evident criteria of falsehood, but still a, a reasonable one, um, you stop doing that. And then 
your eye for such things or your ear for such things or your embodied capacity to evaluate such things develops just as everything develops with practice and your intent which is to maintain truth in your speech becomes sharper and more focused across time and perhaps you get as you eliminate the obvious untruths you get better and better at detecting the more subtle untruths and better and better and better and better at avoiding being entangled with those as well so the first issue i guess is the decision that it's best to live in truth and then you have to decide how far you're willing to take that if that becomes an absolute for example or if it's a you know an important guideline but you know perhaps to be superseded by other things you have to sort that out for yourself once having established that then i believe that you decide and practice not lying and then possibly if you're fortunate if the world smiles on you you'll engage in less self-deception i guess the last thing i would add to that is that there's another form of self-deception that i wrote about in my the second of my last two books so the last one beyond order there's a chapter in there called don't hide things in the fog and that really deals with self-deception too so you might say well there's one form of self-deception that occurs when you say something that you know not to be true and pretend even to yourself that it's true or even act as if it's true or base other statements or actions on it as if it's true but there's a more subtle form of self-deception which i think is more pervasive which is the unwillingness to look at or the willingness to turn away from evidence that you know would undermine something that you want to believe or make things inconvenient for you you know i think like a cliched example is maybe someone runs a company and they have a chief financial officer and they know that person's not exactly straight but it's convenient not to look at the books so maybe when they're around that person they feel guilty and and uncomfortable and that's a sign that you know something's rotten in the state of denmark so to speak but then the self-deceptive act is to not look where you know you should look and you know that's the sort of thing that people refer to when they talk about the elephant under the carpet or the skeleton in the closet and sometimes to mix metaphors terribly it's better to let sleeping dogs lie but often you know if you have the sense that there's something more to the story it's painful and difficult to delve into it but to not do so which is the easy route is a form of of self-deception a very common self-deception and i don't think my experience as a clinician and my personal experience as well is that when you have a sense that something's up and you fail to act you almost inevitably pay a much higher price for it at some point deferred into the future so you have to think that through for yourself and ask yourself if you believe that's true and if it is true unless you want more trouble in the future then perhaps you investigate when your moral unease let's say makes alerts you to the fact that there's something to investigate